Hi everyone, and welcome again to another um, meditation session with me come um, awareness session, because this is a combination of both opening your psychic awareness and also um, opening your spirituality as well. So um, it's... Uh, it's kind of different to what a, a spiritualist circle would be. And it's also very different to um, a meditation circle as well, because I'm kind of combining here um, multiple ideas. I'm combining the ideas of both um, spiritualism and um, Eastern yoga teachings. So in many ways, this is East meets West in many ways. And it's my kind of my own take. So some of the things that you can you can learn here um, will be um, different to what you would learn in a normal um, spiritual circle and different also to what you would learn in a yoga class. I'm just going to make sure my, I'm connected here. Right. I just like everybody, first of all, to just let me know you're online because I'm also looking at you at the same time with my iPad and therefore I'll be able to see your comments later on. And if you're joining us um, <coughs> after the live session, um, still do leave your comments on here because I do react and respond to comments, particularly um, at the end when I'm making some of the um, clairvoyance that I do at the end, because some of that clairvoyance comes not just for the people that are sat with me now live, but there will also be clairvoyant messages there for people that have um, uh join me later. So if you can just let me know, type, please, type the letter K, I suggest, like that, if you've just, if you can see me and we, you've got past the adverts. <laughs> okay. Good. You're here, folks. Thank you very much. I just need to double check, obviously, that we're all here, because telepathy is all right up to a point, isn't it? But I, I don't know if you're here. Uh, I can pick your sensations up, I think. But uh, yeah, great. Well, thank you for joining me. And today, of course, everybody that's here is a patron of, of one form or another. So thank you uh, for all the work you've done to help to support, you know, this channel and give us the opportunity to get all this thing started and take it further. Now, uh, like I said at the beginning, these are not consecutive um, courses. I'm, you can come back in on these at any stage. So if you've joined me for the first time this evening, uh, don't don't worry, because I, I will always kind of go back over things and give you a kind of a new emphasis and a new look and, and try to introduce something slightly new each time with the objective of, as I say, opening your awareness, helping you to understand your um, spiritual powers and helping you to connect. So it's not strictly about psychic development, although a lot of these ideas of cities and things like that will come into what I teach. Now, um, and so always, like I say, please comment. Um, if you're new to this, um, always comment too. And uh, if, you, if you want to join us live, you just need to sign up um, through the YouTube channel to become a patron, which will be in the description below. Right, now, today the focus is going to be, I, I want the focus to be <coughs> much more on the, what we call the third eye, colloquially, um, the idea of the Ajna Centre. Now, a lot of fuss is made about the idea of the third eye, and the way you see people write about it, um, you think it was like something out of a, um, a computer game where a big eye opens up and you have this special vision and I can almost see a beam coming out, you know, it, it's, it, it gets a little bit carried away with fantasy. The third eye is part of us, part of who we are. There's nothing strange about it. There's nothing unusual about it. It is the seat of our consciousness. That's all it is. Simple as that, you know, <laughs> you're, you're there. That is your third eye. It is the place where in the body, your consciousness is focused. I say in the body because it, the third eye also connects us to uh, the astral realms, I suppose you could call it, but also to the very source of existence, which is the, the universal, uh, universal mind, the absolute consciousness, the abstract state of pure existence. So really, 
you know, let's demystify this. Don't let's get carried away with this idea that the third eye is something special. You know, I don't, I don't want to go down this lobsang rampart type of route with it. You know, it's very simple. It's just the seat of our consciousness. Now, you remember in some other weeks what we've been doing is we've been moving light as I call it, it's prana, prana energy, up and down the spine. And we take it up through the chakras and we eventually will take it through the top of the head. And then we'll bring a light down through us and clear our body through light and fill ourselves up with light. That's what we've been doing and that's what we will continue to do, taking a slightly different emphasis each time. Now, when we get to the, um, I, what we're going to do this time is we're going to move the as we did before, I'll talk us through with a guided meditation. We're going to bring the light up through the base of the spine, take it up the spine again. I call it light because I see it as light. But you, like I say before, it can be a sensation, it can be a sound, it can be an energy. But we're going to bring the energy first from the base, from the base up through the spine and initially take it straight into the third eye centre. Now, um, I want you to try to think of this more as being right in the middle of the brain rather than here. It is here, but it's also in the middle of the brain. It's like a thin tube, almost like thing, that connects between here and the middle of the brain. But in the middle of the brain, right inside, is that's where our third eye is. That's where the, um, the pineal gland is. And actually, the scientific tests they've done with the pineal gland seems to suggest it's made out of similar um, chemistry and similar cellular systems to an actual eye. And some animals and lizards, for example, have an eye at the top of their head with a connection straight down to the middle of the brain. And they think that the pineal gland may have actually had something to do with this early eye that we had in our, in our evolution, um, which could sense the change of the seasons and the weather. It, could, it, it was a sort of a general sensor, so we could kind of get an idea where we were in time. But that's a whole new, that's a whole thing I could talk about there. So, what, we, what we're going to do um, is we're going to use the um, uh, third eye as our um, first stage of our meditation. So we're going to move the energy to the middle of the brain and to the third eye. Now, so far, I haven't given you any mantras to put on the chakras, because each chakra can be stimulated further with a mantra, right? So... It's it, what we need to do is put some um, sound into that third eye center. And the sound we use is the sound OM. Now, you've probably heard that. I'm sure you must have done. You can't, you can't go nowadays anywhere without hearing some, something. You haven't heard the sound OM. It's in lots of music. People like the sound of it. It's, it, it also, it's the, it's the ultimate word in many ways. It's the, um, it's the sound of the universe. It's the vibration almost of the Big Bang. It's the, it's Amen as well. It's like the perfect, it's the perfect sound. It's the perfect, what we call um, Bija mantra, a seed mantra, but Om is the greatest of them all. All the mantras come from Om. Om is the primary mantra and all the other mantras come from the sound of Om. So we're gonna put into the middle of our brain, we're going to chant inwardly the word OM. But we're first going to do it verbally. And what I want you to do is, um, you, uh, what we'll do is we'll chant OM three times, and then I'll ask you to continue um, with your um, mantra um, inwardly. But we start it off by with sound. So hopefully you're not in an environment where people are all going to start saying, hey, what's going on here? You know, um, you can do it just inwardly if you want to. But when we get to the third eye centre in the moment when I guide you through, I would like to suggest to you that you put your fingers, your thumbs, both thumbs, there's an actual technique we'll use later on, but you put both thumbs in the ear so that you can press on, you know that little bit of skin there that's on the ear, you can press on that if you like. But it's, if your thumb is in your ear, it's comparatively comfortable and you can rest your... I can't hear you now. <laughs> you can rest your hands anywhere on your head where it feels comfortable. But that way, when you do OM like this, OM. When you do that, 
you'll hear a fantastic resonance in the brain. So I, I'd like you just to try that. Now, I'm just going to do it three times. Um, I'll do three of them, and you can just do, come go along with me. So it's almost like this. It starts quiet and moves up and drifts off again. It's as if it's fading away into the distance almost. You see, it, it rises, it comes louder, and it moves away again. But now try this with your thumbs in your ears and you'll hear a very beautiful resonance, okay? So we'll do it three times. Okay, yeah, so we're, hopefully we've all got our fingers out of our ears now. But, okay, it looks a bit silly, but did you notice the incredible resonance that you get with the sound that is so different if you were just to say it out loud? Because when we do that, it internalizes the sound of OM. It becomes part of our body. We almost connect with it in a very physical level. Did, did you actually feel that? I'm just interested. Any comments on that? Did you, did you all try it? And, and did you get an interesting connection there? Um, could you feel that? Give me, a, give me a comment, please. Perhaps you're still doing it. Uh, <laughs> Someone's saying about seven o'clock. No, it's supposed to be 4.30, this one. The seven o'clock one's tomorrow on Friday. Yeah, it was beautiful. It is. It's very, it's very, um, uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic thing. You can do that just on its own, actually. Um, uh, it's, it's just incredible sound. Now, what you can, you can practice that a little bit later, but we're going to introduce that into our meditation this evening. So now we're going to go on our meditation. So when we get to that point, you know what we're talking about. We'll do three ohms and then you can take your fingers out your ears and then I'll continue the meditation from there. Because obviously I can't talk to you if you've all got your fingers in your ears doing om. We won't hear me. So we're going to do three of them um, when we get to that point. Right. Now then, let's do the meditation proper now. Okay. <coughs> so what I'd like you to do Get comfortable, get sat comfortably somehow. So if you're on a chair, that's fine. I'm sat cross-legged, but I'm used to doing yoga through my life. So it's easy for me, but sit whatever is comfortable for you. As long as your back is reasonably straight, like we said before. And feel the, that sort of, you remember I mentioned about the importance of getting the balance, that like the middle of the brain, you know, where the pineal gland is, gets in balance with the base of the spine, like a reed. This is another very powerful technique which we'll explore another time, but you basically sway until you feel your point of balance. Okay, feel your point of balance. And now relax, let it all go. In fact, take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, say relax like this. Relax. Just do it now with an R breath, like this. Mm. 
You let all the pressures of the day just go. You know, if you do anything else, just doing this is enough. Let all the pressure go, all those troubles, all the <coughs> horrible things we're seeing on television and all that, let all that go. All the things you've got to do and haven't got to done and all the rest of it, let it go. Just let it go. Let all the pressure go. This is your time. This is your moment. This is your time when you can find deep inner peace. You deserve it. Everyone deserves this. A little bit of space. Let the pressure go, love, and move into that sacred space within you. A space where there's no troubles, no worries. All things, even the body itself, is hardly even there. We just observe it. It's just there. Our thoughts that rise and fall, they're just there. Leave them be. Let everything be as it is. Let everything be in its natural state of peace. Sometimes by just doing nothing, it all happens. You know, just let it be, let it do its own thing. We're going to pull the light, the prana, which as you remember is intelligent, so it knows what to do, it knows where to go. We don't have to interfere too much, but we're going to pull, we're using our power of visualisation, we're going to move that light, that energy, that pranic life force, that beautiful sensation of peaceful oneness, we're going to move it through our body, first of all, by visualising below ourselves that infinite sea of light. Do you remember I told you about it before? Visualise and imagine that you're floating above a beautiful sea of radiant light. Every direction, a beautiful sea of fantastic luminance. Look at that beautiful, shining twinkling, incandescent light. Put your full attention on it. Feel it. You can almost smell it like the sea, you know. Beautiful, beautiful light. Now take your attention down to that light. And we gather it up. We gather it up like a great ball of light. Gather up a beautiful ball of that light, you know. Gather it together. See it in any way you like. You can imagine gathering it with your hands, gathering with a, 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 a well bucket or something. You gather the light. You can see it now. See it's beginning to move and turn as you gather it together. This is a real dynamic energy, like a great comet of light in some ways. It's peaceful. It's clear. It's beautiful, but it's full of energy. Now, the base of the spine, our first chakra here, and we feel the energy moving and turning and gradually becoming more and more energetic as we open that center. We imagined it last time as a lotus flower opening, a red lotus flower, because we put red to that center, but see it open up. See the energy there in the base of the spine becoming more and more active, more and more alive, more and more energetic. Feel that energy opening, 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 a beautiful energy is in the base of the spine, your energy, your life force, opening up there in the base of the spine. And now we take our attention back down to that sea of light again to gather more energy. We gather the light up, gather up the energy, a great ball of light, see the light, imagine it there, full of light. It could be full of colours or it can be white, but it's pure, pure light. See it, it's very bright. Gather it together, and now we're going to pull that light up our spines. We pull that light like a great ball of energy. We pull it up through the base of the spine, and now gradually and slowly we pull it up the spine. We see it moving up the whole spinal column. It moves right up through. Forget about the chakras, just let it go up the spine. See it going up, 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 up through. It's got to about the throat now, and now take it into the middle of the brain and feel the middle of the brain opening with light. The Ajna center, the third eye center, feel it opening up like a lotus of brilliant light, right in the middle of the brain and also between the eyes. It's opening up with a beautiful energy. Feel your whole head filled with that light, like there's a brilliant spot of light right in the middle 
and it's radiating light like a star, like a pulsar that's given out vast amounts of energy and light right there in the middle of your brain. Focus on it, see it, feel it. You can even hear it. Put your whole attention on it. Get your attention there. Relax onto that light in the middle of the brain. Relax into it. And now we're going to put the sound with it. We're going to put the OM and connect with that light at the same time. So I want you now to put your thumbs in your ears and we do three OMs and then we'll do another, we'll let you continue doing OM internally. But we're going to do it out loud first. So we put our thumbs in our ears and three OMs. done your arms just keep with that light in the middle of the brain and now internalize an om as if the light is radiating the om okay go to the light in the middle of the brain and let it be a light but let it also be a sound om. hear it internally hear it internally listen within Keep the focus on the third eye, in the middle of the head. Oh. Okay, you should be well connected with that now. And another little technique that sometimes people do, instead of the long ones, you can try this as well. It's short ones like this. Om 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 om. That can sometimes be an easier way to get that connection because it's easier to keep the focus. Om 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 om. So that is the mantra for the third eye. Om. And all the chakras have a different mantra, but this one is the most important. And Patanjali always told us to first open up the third eye as the first part of the process of opening to our awakening. Now, now we're going to go back again and continue the opening process as we did before, but I'm not going to take us all through the chakras because our third eye is so open now, I'm going to take us back straight to the top of the head book. So follow my instructions now. Okay. Okay, now go back down again, back to that light below us. Look below us and see that beautiful radiance of light again, that sea of light, you know, we're floating above that sea of light. See it in all directions. Beautiful, beautiful light. Above a glorious sea of light. And now go down to that sea of light and gather some more light together. Gather it together. Gather the pranic energy. Pr gather that life force. And now we're going to bring it up through the body, right up the spinal system. So we bring it up through the base of the spine. And now take that light up the spine, taking it up the spine, up, 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 
up until it's got into the third eye in the middle of the head again. But now take it right the way through and up through the top of the head, up through the crown centre here as we feel that open like a peacock's feather. A line goes up and it opens like a fan. A beautiful fan, like a mandala of light. Feel all the energy coming through the top of your head. Feel it reaching up high above you too as it begins to open up. And you can feel a natural flow of energy coming from that base of the spine and the sea below. And it's going up the spine with infinite, un, uh, unimaginable amounts of energy that can pour up, give you vitality and healing. It goes up through the top of the head and fills and surrounds your whole aura. Your whole aura is filled with light as that light pulls up. And now again, remember which we did last time, we now see a light above us. We see a glorious sun of light above us, pouring its rays, its healing rays down upon our body and through our astral form too. So let the light now pour down from above like a psychic shower. It pours down through the top of our heads, out of our fingertips and toes, through the body, cleansing us within, washing away everything we don't need, all the stress, all the pain, any illness that the body might have is washed away in the purity of this pure pranic energy. We're healing yourself at the same time, but we're filling ourselves with light. So let the light pour down through us. It pours through, you can feel it pouring down through the body, through the arms. You can feel it pouring back down the spine. You can feel it clearing the brain, all the internal organs. Everything is being cleaned. Even your past karmas are being cleaned. Even your past is being washed away. All the troubles that were there in your life, wash them away with that brilliant light. And now let it pour into the body and fill us up. We're going to fill ourselves up like a vessel. Those that haven't joined us before, imagine that it's like you're like a, ve a glass vessel, perhaps, that you fill with light. It pours in like liquid and it fills the body. It fills the feet. <coughs> it fills the lower legs, the upper legs, the hips, the stomach, the hands, the lower arms, the upper arms, the torso, the chest pouring more light in through the top of the head, feeling it pouring in, unimaginably beautiful light, pouring in and filling the neck, filling the head to the very top of the head, and now you're overflowing with light. It's pouring all over you now. You can feel your whole being is just filled with glorious light. See that light, see that light within. And now you're a being of light in an infinity of light. In front of us, we see nothing but light. Light stretching in every direction. Behind us, beautiful light. To the left, to the right, light. Above us, light. Below us, light. Surrounding us in every direction, we can sense and feel and the glory of that light, the infinity of it. It goes on and on forever. It has no end. See that light. Feel its presence. Feel its sense of time of living in the absolute presence of now. Feel the glory of the ever newness of that light as now we allow us as beings of light to merge with that light. For a moment, be at one with that infinite light. Let go. Just let go. It's safe. It's all you. Remember, while you're in this space, you're also connected with the spirit. 
So if anything interesting comes to you, keep a note when you come out of your meditation. And please give us a comment because it might help you to reinforce what you've seen or been shown or told. Okay, let's come back to normal awareness now. <coughs> the temptation, of course, is to stay in the meditation for hours and hours and hours. But uh, you can do this when you practice on your own. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of a taster of what we can do with meditation and that very powerful um, technique. So um, as you come out, have have you been finding that helpful so far? Did you, did you, did you? get into that properly guys um, let us know in the comments because um, it helps us to keep connected with you because when we do this type of work you know we all connect we all we all connect no matter how far away we are from each other even though you might be on the other side of the world to me now we are connecting our energies I can feel your energy and you can feel my energy I expect um, you can feel each other's energy so um, it's useful um, also, if you can type a comment now just to let me know that you're um, connected with me still and um, I'm, I feel I want to give a couple of messages now as well to people out there. So if you're with me, um, type the letter K or anything. I say K because it's nice and convenient. Like OK. 
All right. Well, I'm going to give a few messages. Um, I just want to say, while I was doing the meditation there, I also um, felt connected with somebody that was talking to me about the name Jeffrey. And this would be, have a connection with someone that would understand something about living by the sea. Now, uh, I don't know if this is for anybody here, but it might be for somebody that comes later. And these messages usually get taken. It's a little bit hard, as we know, trying to do this without um, Domenico in the background doing the feed in with faces and things. We'll be able to do this in a different way later. But I want to say I want to give a message, first of all, to somebody called who can, understands the name Jeffrey. And that li there's something about living near the sea. And there's something about a relationship here. It might be. It might be somebody that has a gay relationship, I think, that I'm talking about here. And there's there's a message for this person um, that I work for <coughs> where I feel I want to connect with. I think it's their mother in spirit who is saying that there um, there's something about a house move that has just happened for you. And all it all went wrong a bit just because you just done the move and then all this lockdown happened. And I feel I want to say um, that there's so many loose ends left with it and a great deal of money seemed to get stuck and lost. And they're a bit worried about it because the estate agent is in financial trouble. Um, and I want to say for, for you that there's, it's, I feel I'm saying from the mother in the spirit, I want to give the name Elizabeth with this. And I want to say um, it's going to be OK. So I don't know if any of you can take that message directly yet or you can leave a comment later on in the comments of the of the actual YouTube, if you would, rather than just on the Patreon site. And I also got one more message I want to give here too, um, which is somebody's talking about... I'm hearing both Molly and May, and I don't know if someone called someone Molly May as a sort of a, a joke in a way or something like that. There's a, this sort of feeling here. And... I'm giving, I want to give a message from somebody in the spirit who gives the name Edward. And Edward, or Eddie, but Edward, I think he'd prefer to always be called Edward. Um, and it's given me something about he was a very religious sort of person. So, and he had um, strong Christian values, Edward did. And he's giving a message here because he's talking about something that somebody had just passed over. There'd been a passing just recently. I don't know if this person had had the flu as well, but there's a, there's a feeling very similar to the connections with what's happening around us at the moment. And he just wants to give the message to say, all is well with that person that's just passed into spirit. Okay. So I'm just going to leave those two messages for us here today. And for maybe for one of you that's with me here live, live now, or it may be for someone else later coming to the site. But leave a message if you understand it, please. It's fair if you do that. Um, and I, I, I want to... So we'll do more of this type of thing when we start to get into the, into the um, proper studio. Uh, and I'm going to run a group, a circle, which we'll do online and help you connect as well. And I'll have some other mediums with me at the same time actually working with me. OK, so now we've done our meditation. We've opened up. I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you were able to connect and open up into spirit a little bit there. But now we need to close it all down again because we've got our, we've got our openness and we've got our energy. So this again is following a similar pattern to what I said last time. We send the energy out, first of all, in a healing thought. So I'd, I'd like you to now join me in visualising the people you know that need healing. And if you need healing too, you can put yourself in this as well. And I'd like you to visualise now that there's a, we're all in a beautiful garden together. And we're calling all the people that we know who need healing help. We can feel them walking through the garden to the circle that we formed in the middle of the garden. We're all sat round in a circle and joining us now and sitting down on the grass are all those people that need the healing light, that need the healing energy. We can feel an absolutely beautiful garden around us. It's full of so many colours and flowers and the sounds of the birds and the blue sky above us. And it's a very bright and beautiful, peaceful place. There's a natural sense of healing here. 
And as the people come and sit with us, we notice, first of all, that they all look well. They all look perfectly OK, because this is part of our visualisation when we send it out for healing. We see them all sat full of beautiful light for pouring from the garden all around us. All the colours of the garden are like a garden of light. It's pure light, this place. We've been working with light and prana and now we can see this light and it absorbs into the bodies of everybody sat there, into us as well as all those that have come for the healing. We've drawn them to us through their souls and we feel that divine light within each of them. Let the light fill everybody there. And they are well. And we know they are well. We see them well with total positivity of our thinking. And now we need to close ourselves down. And this is always very important when you do this afterwards, you know, to close the energy centres down. So now we're going to let the light gradually quieten throughout our body. We let the light pour down through the top of our head once again. But first we close the third eye centre. We see it closing down. That's been very bright and open. We close it again because we don't want to be open all the time. And now we see that line of light in the spine. Because we didn't open the chakras one at a time, but we see the light gradually quieten on the spine. We feel it gradually becoming more and more quiet as the light drops away back down to the base of the spine where it becomes quiet again. The whole body frame, the whole auric frame, the whole astral body is now quiet and still. And now we look up again and we see that brilliant sun of light above us and we let the light pour down through our whole body frame. It pours down through our fingers, out of our fingers and toes. It pours through the body, washing the inside of the body clean again. And now we fill ourselves once more with light, filling up the toes, filling up the legs, filling up the arms, filling up the torso, filling up the neck and the head, until finally we're filled right the way up to the top of our head and we close that final chakra at the top of the head. We see it close like a a fan closing down. We feel the light pull in and shut down again. It's closed. Internally, we're still full of light and energy and peace, but we've brought our aura in. We're not oversensitive now. And we now visualise that we can wrap round ourselves a great beautiful blanket, a warm blanket that, again, gives us a feeling of pulling it all back in again. It's inside ourselves. We've internalised our attention again. We're not letting our energy become wasted by leading outwards. And gradually we can now come back to full normal consciousness. The energy is at peace. We're again at one with ourselves. And I hope that was helpful to you all. I hope you enjoyed that meditation. Um, not a great many comments, but I don't think I can see some of the comments that you've said that if it was useful to you, I hope that um, you were able to um, enjoy that tonight. And if you've had anything interesting, please do share um, what you felt tonight. If you've seen anything in your, um, in your meditations there, um, please do um, share your, what you've seen. You might have seen your spirit guide, perhaps. You might have seen somebody from spirit that you know. You might have had an insight and a thought that's different. Or you might have something to say about what's happened with, the, what, with you tonight. Did you feel anything there? Did you feel um, peace? Did you feel a sense of uh, connection, connection with me and one another here tonight? So I hope that has been helpful to you. Unfortunately, I can't see the comments on my, um, on my iPad here. They seem to have got lost a bit. So yes, I'm seeing them now. So I wouldn't see some of your comments earlier. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. And like I say, do please, when this is finished, share it, share this video, uh, because it's nice to let others can join us uh, in our work together and be able to enjoy um, moments of peace. Because during this time of coronavirus, when we've got plenty of time, um, it's a great time for each of us to um, enjoy um, just doing those simple things, that simple thing of meditating. When do we ever get a chance to do it normally? We really don't, do we? It's very, very hard to, to focus like this um, at the rest, rest of the, in the normal life. So 
let's turn this a period of isolationism into a period of awakening, a period of um, being able to go within ourselves and find that inner inner self within ourselves. It is a period that could be for us all a period of absolute blessing, really, a time when we can perhaps make huge spiritual strides that we can't do when the world is clambering around us all the time. So I'm just finally saying thanks to you all. I'm just saying thanks to you. Are you some one of you saw horses? Yeah, Carol says she's seen a very peaceful um, agility bits. <laughs> That's a good name. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, useful. Yeah. So, but if you, sometimes you might sometimes see something, you know. Um, and you see spirit, yeah, uh, that's good, uh, and yeah, so it, it, it's nice, it's working for you, thank you. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, but practice this meditation, and don't forget what we've learned tonight is that we, we can stimulate and open that third eye centre with that on sound, and that technique where you put your fingers in your ears, you can practice that, you can just sit in meditation and practice that, um, and another thing you can do with that as well, actually, is if you if you do if you do meditation like that, you can buy a special square that you can lean on, so you can get your shot, you get your elbows, so you can do it for a long period of time. You can lean on something like I'm leaning on the edge of the screen there, but if you can lean on something, um, it will often give you the chance to be able to sort of relax into it and just let it go and let it go. And do keep doing the oms 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 oms, and then when you stop and you go quiet, particularly if you do this very very early in the morning, this practice is usually done dawn when there's no noise or just before dawn at the brahman hour um, but then when you finish doing the oms and you just sit and listen quietly what you will hear is a resonance that continues you will hear the inner ears you will hear the sounds of the nervous system and you'll hear very 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 precise sounds you might hear distant sounds you listen very very carefully it needs to be perfectly quiet and still which is another good thing during this period of the coronavirus because it's quite quiet out there at the moment. So you listen very, very quietly and listen to what you hear and you'll hear the inner sound. Some of you might, I get a bit of tinnitus sometimes, you might hear a tinnitus sort of sound, but listen beyond that. Listen to, and you'll hear all sorts of things. They say, you know, you can hear bells sometimes, you can hear the sound on resonating in the distance. You hear the sound of Krishna's conch, you know, when he blows the, blows the hot conch. And um, you'll hear the tinkling sounds. You'll hear all sorts of strange and unusual sounds. And again, this technique is one that is said to improve and increase the city powers, the inner clairvoyance and the inner um, uh, clairaudience, really, because it's an inner listening. Um, and it's, it's kind of linked to the body. But also those sounds are supposed to be the sounds of the spiritual sphere that you hear when you do that. So that technique has many, many implications to it. We can use it to stimulate and increase our connection with the third eye. And also when you're doing that technique too, remember to try to connect the sound to the light. I mean, I see it as light inside the middle of the brain. And I'm trying to put the OM as a light inside so it's om and it's light it's radiating sound it's radiating light and that way we get a, a really strong connection with this very important center <coughs> the ajna center it's a two-petaled lotus actually it's seen in um in, in, in the indian teachings but see it whatever way you see it and, and sometimes when we're doing that and we'll talk about these things more often you sometimes you may see a purple light when that's happening too, a purple light and often a, a moon upside down. There's a sort of, but I'm gonna go on to things like that another time. But you know, practice that sound. We, that Using that sound, I think is a good thing you can take away from this particular session today um, and introduce it into your meditations if you're practicing this, these things that I've been showing you here. Um, and try it out someday. You don't have to do it every single time, but you know, it's, it's, all these things are flexible. You know, we use them when we need them. And sometimes meditation might not need any opening up, you know, they just go straight into meditation because you're the time factors and so on. Other times, and particularly if I'm doing mediumistic work, I have to go through this whole process of opening my inner self. And then I'm super aware when it comes to doing um, spirit messages for people. 
I mean, I can't just jump into the bleeding. So when people say, oh, what do you see around me? Mm, sorry, I can't see anything because I'm not tuned in. But this gets you, teaches you to tune in and shutting down again, like we did at the end there, teaches you to tune out again because that's just as important so that you don't become depleted of your energy. Anyway, thank you all for joining me and join me again. I usually do these ones at the moment about 4.30. There was a bit of a mix up. I hope there hasn't been a wrong post for that, but lots of you came. And um, we'll do another one tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to be, um, Jane and myself will be on live, we hope. And we're going to talk about um, our work in India and Satya Sai Baba and when we went to see him and the miracles and things and the th interesting things that we saw there. So that's an interesting one for you. So have some questions ready for tomorrow night. And we'll carry on with these. And maybe next time I start to work a bit more with, around the idea of connecting perhaps with our spirit guides a bit more. But all of these, we refine the meditations a little bit at a time until you get more and more used to some of the techniques that I'm teaching you here. Okay, thank you for joining me. See you soon. Bye for now.